If you'd like to use Pega on a Linux computer, your options are quite limited. You either have to have a virtualized Windows machine using VMware or VirtualBox or something like that and install Personal Edition on that, or you need to download one of Pega's prepackaged uh, virtual machines where Pega's already been installed on some virtual kind of Linux that you then run uh, from there. However, there are ways to get it working uh, natively on Linux, and here's uh, how you do it. First, what you do is you go to the support page in the PDN and you download the personal edition. Now it's four gigabytes, it's going to take some time to get down. Once it is down, what you do is you extract the contents. The easiest way is simply say extract here, Then you wait. Now in the extract, what's going to be important are a number of files. Uh, one of the files that is, is very important are the database dumps. These database dumps essentially will restore Pega's rules schema and the data schema. And the SQLJ dump will essentially restore the PL Java and PL SQL uh, functions that, uh, that Pega uses. Now opening a terminal, first thing we want to do is go to the directory where we downloaded the personal edition and extracted it. Now what we're going to need are a couple of things for our convenience. One is uh, a database client, like SQL Workbench, for example, or Squirrel. This will help us to ensure that our ID and password work, that the JDBC URL is correct, that sort of thing. Okay. Now we're assuming, of course, that you have Postgres already installed on your Linux computer. And here, when we originally tested, we saw that we got an error. We made sure that the Postgres databases are actually running, and now we can see that we're able to connect. Now, one of the things that you're going to need in order for Pega to be able to run on our own Postgres database is PL Java. What we need to do is essentially follow the instructions on the PL Java website. In short, we need to clone the Git repo that PL Java maintains, and then we need to compile it. So here I'm creating a directory called pljava, and then I'm going to clone the GitHub repository into that directory. Now we'll use Maven to compile essentially and build the jar files. Now how PLJava works is actually the 
executables are outside of the database, but then the database is made aware of the fact that PL Java exists so that it knows to execute its functions, Java functions, against the, those libraries that we're building now. And you'll notice that the first in the first attempt to build it, it, it did not work. It failed. So now what we need to do is uh, find where is Java installed on the system and set Java home accordingly. And on this second attempt at building it, we realized that um, it fails again. Going back to the PL Java website, there is a note on building on Ubuntu. Now, my system is a just a standard Debian system, uh, not Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu. However, the the advice there is uh, sound, and those two packages, I use Synaptic to find them and install them. And now once they've been installed, the, the PL Java should compile correctly. Perfect. The next thing to do is to actually run the PL Java jar. And what that will do is install all the components in the correct places. Essentially, there you'll see it's installing them to user share Postgres. Next thing we need to do is to uh, create an extension inside the database. So we use P, uh, the, the database client that comes with Postgres and run the extension. Another thing we need to do is actually tell Postgres where those extensions are. Uh, sorry, not where they are, where, where Java, the Java virtual machine is installed so that it can use the Java virtual machine to run the extensions. this time yes and this time the registering the extension has worked Now 
Now the alter command, the, the, the reason we use the alter database command in order to set the JVM location is so that um, with each restart of Postgres, it won't actually forget. Now we're going to restart Postgres so that it will come up again with the PL Java installed. The next job, of course, is to create a database, a Pega database. So we created a database called Pega, and we're going to restore the uh, two database backups into it. And here you'll see that we have the rules and the data schemas and all their tables in the database. And you can also see that we have the functions in there in place also. next step is to actually expand the pega jar file there's a jar file that came in the in the larger zip file and that jar file contains a couple of uh, important things one is a scripts directory that has a little bit of sql in it and it contains a tomcat directory which essentially has uh, a, the tomcat that we'll use in order to run Pega. So here we're creating a directory and pulling out the two uh, items that we need. In the scripts directory, really, there's only one file that, that's important to us. And it just has a one piece of SQL that just tells uh, the database what order to uh, scan in when looking for things. And the other directory is a, just a standard Pega uh, Tomcat install with the Pega war file and help war file in the web apps directory. The context.xml file in Tomcat is, is essentially used for the creation of connection pools to databases. We're going to modify it slightly to match our database. We're also going to set up just some dummy passwords for these uh, out of the box administrative accounts for Tomcat.
Now, the Pega Personal Edition doesn't come with a set env.sh file. So what we're going to do is simply copy the set env.bat file, which is a DOS version of that file, and, uh, and then kind of rewrite it a bit. So we put in the location of bash, and then we're going to kind of modify these uh, variables so that they're compatible with, with Unix. We're gonna make all the SH scripts executable and uh, we have to set a couple items, Catalina base and Catalina home uh, in here. Actually, they probably need to be set in the Catalina.sh file. Just so that uh, Tomcat can find its place in the world when it's being, when it's being launched. Now bash doesn't really use, they use the export command and uh, no command at all in front. Set actually doesn't work properly, doesn't work. It's not part of that language. Here we're gonna set the port and the name of the database. And rather than localhost, we just put the actual local IP address, which is always 127.0.0.1. Another thing we need to do here is actually set the Java Home to be the JDK version 8. Uh, 1.8 is uh, supported by Pega, and the newer versions are not yet, and it'll fail. Uh, my first attempt to get it going did try to use 17, but that did not work. So I went back to 8. Uh, I also notice that in the newer versions, uh, releases of Linux, uh, 8, 1.8 is not available out of the box. So I had to go to the Debian repository uh, online and find it and download it manually and install it. I simply installed it using GW. If 
Now, even though Pega did fire up, uh, it actually, I couldn't actually get to it with the browser. Uh, I realized that the default port here, first of all, is a variable and uh, I didn't want to have to worry about what that variable was. So changing it to a hard coded number, as it's always been, and I put it at a port that's available on my on my system, which happens to be 80, 85. And the redirect to a secure port, I put it to 8443, which is a bit more standard than 9443. Or if not standard, at least what I'm used to. And so this time everything comes up without uh, issue. Okay, so at this point it should be up. Tomcat's up and I goes up. Fantastic. In default ID and password. There we go. Pega Personal Edition up and running on uh, Debian system, or which will work on any Linux system actually. And uh, all you need is uh, JDK 8, the Pega Personal Edition download file, and that's it. Uh, everything else you should be able to find. Thank you.